I would love to welcome you to the VIP show. I am so excited and so honored because we have been waiting. Can I tell you, we have been waiting. The world has been buzzing for this particular <laughs> interview. And I'll tell you, this is a special interview for me because many of you know her as Nicole Mangrum, the celebrity stylist. She's traveling all around the world and making everyone look beautiful and amazing as she does so well. But what a lot of you don't know, and we're going to share this with you during this interview, is Nicole and I go way, way back. So we'll talk a little bit about that as well. But what I want to do is I want to open up today's show. And for all of those entrepreneurs that are following us that have been waiting to hear from her, and for all those young girls that have captivated my heart, you've sent in your videos, asking questions. Oh, my gosh. You guys are just too cute, and this is for you. So I'd like to start today by welcoming none other than celebrity hairstylist, Nicole Mangrum. Welcome to the show, Nicole. Hey! Hey! Hey, hey y'all! <laughs> oh, oh, my goodness. You know, everybody, seriously, they've all been waiting for you to be on this show. You know, I've talked about a lot of people that I'm going to interview, and the buzz has been going around because... I just want to start out with everybody just knowing who you are, Nicole, and what you do. And let's just start back because many people know where you are now. Let's start from the beginning. How did you get started styling hair? How did how did all that begin for you? Um, you know, I feel like it's something, Pasha, that I've always just done. Um, as a little girl, I would carry around my comb and brush and brush and comb and braid and style anybody that would allow me to at church anybody had long hair i was in the back you know the pastor preaching i'm in the back braiding hair you know it was just something that i felt was innate to me and mm -hmm. um um something that i just i always had a passion for i wasn't sure that it was something that um i wanted to do because i actually thought i, I wanted to go into medicine ah because i like science as well but um, hair is something that I've just always had just like a real passion for. And I've always loved the way um, people felt when I got it at my chair. That was like mm -hmm. the, the drug for me that dr drew me into this industry. I remember the first time that um, when I was a, a little girl, I was probably maybe 12. Uh, mm -hmm. And I, you know, braiding was my thing there because, you know, nobody would give me some scissors to put in my hands. <laughs> but of course not. <laughs> but uh, braiding. So, I, I, you know, I used to braid, you know, everyone's hair, all the back to school kids and everything. And um, I decided one day my mom was like, OK, I'm going to let you braid my hair today. And I did some extensions on her hair. And when I finished, she was just like. She couldn't believe that I had done that because I've been practicing for such a long time on, you know, how to attach braids and different things like that. And she went and showed everyone what I had done. But I remember the feeling of um, how proud I felt and how good I, I knew that I had made my mom felt. I, I saw her confidence soar. I really did. And that, you know, that is what drew me in. Wow. Wow. That was so cool. How old were you again when I you did those? About 11, 12. Wow. That yeah. is amazing. So listen, everybody, you never know where that little spark is going to come from. Um, all the young girls that are listening right now, if you're, you know, 9, 10, 11, 12, or you're a teenager, it doesn't matter. You never know. It may be just that one day you go to school and you draw a piece of art and you realize that there's something there. Or like Nicole, you do these extensions and all of a sudden you realize, oh my goodness, not only am I good for a little girl, but I'm really good at this. And a lot of young girls are trying to find 
their their natural talent. And I always tell people when you find that natural talent and you zone in on that natural talent and figure out a way to make that career that your career, that's when the magic happens. That's, that's right. And that's and you you just focus on that. You just keep. Uh, practicing and learn as much as you can about that particular gift or field that you're in. And, and I guarantee you will be successful. Wow. That's amazing. So let's go from there. So you do your mom's extension. She shows everybody she's happy. You're happy because she's proud. And then how do you go from being that 11 year old girl that one day did your mom's extension to, to now having your own salon? Now you're an entrepreneur in Chicago, which is, I'm sure, a tough place sometimes maybe to start a business. I don't know. You can tell us. But you have this salon of your own. Uh, was it easy or how did, how did you how did that happen for you? You know, what? It, it sometimes people think things happen overnight, but I feel like um, with success and true success that is lasting, um, you have your 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 ups and downs and and there's definitely steps to the ladder that you have to climb. And um, I worked hard. Um, I, you know, went to cosmetology school, loved it. I excelled in that. Um, I worked long hours. Um, you know, being a hairdresser is not um, an easy occupation. It's hard on your body. Um, so in the beginning, before I owned a salon, I worked very, very long hours, 12 to 16 hours a day. I, you know, I started off as a, a very busy stylist because I had started off in my mom's kitchen. So <laughs> I started off in my mom's kitchen and from there um, went into um, cosmetology school where I developed a very large clientele and my clientele followed me into a salon that I was working in. And I worked many, many hours um, for many years until um, I decided, you know what, this is, uh, you know, I've always had an entrepreneurial spirit. This is something that, um, I want to do and I believe that I can do because first of all, you need to believe you can do something before you even step out there and do it. Mm -hmm. So I believe that I could do it based upon um, the experience that I had. I worked in different salons. I, you know, absorbed as much as I could from the entrepreneurs that I worked for. And um, I knew that I could do it. So I stepped out there in faith and um, opened a salon in Wicker Park called Freedom. And, you know, God blessed it. And we were very successful for 15 years. I own that place. And it's something that I still do. I mean, I, I create a vision board for myself uh, every year. And, you know, when I achieve something and accomplish something, I just, you know, place a new picture there and a new dream there. But I just feel like it's really, really important to visualize the things that you that you want in your life and don't even think about um making it small i mean make the dreams obscene <laughs> oprah was on my vision board long before any of this ever happened for me you know in in working with her um but you know it was just like oh you know what i would love to work with oprah but mm -hmm. i you know what and honestly i i thought maybe it was just maybe doing some work on her show or you know i never thought that i would be working as her personal hairstylist. So um, you just never know if you just put the dream out there, just honestly, just put it out there. I always, I talk to my sister about this all the time. It's just like, dream a bigger dream. Right. Like really just dream a bigger dream. So I love this because I talk to young entrepreneurs all the time. And one of my biggest things is you've got to see it before it happens. You've got to have vision. So you've got to know where you're going before you get there. Mm -hmm. So I'm a big advocate of vision boards. I love vision boards. I love, you know, and I like the old school vision boards. You know, I know a lot of people figured out how to do it digitally. I got that. And that's really cute. But I like to cut out, you know, I'm old school. I need to flip through the magazine. Yeah. I, look, me too. I have my big, you know, piece of um, construction board and I, Blue words and you know it, it's something about it like the process of it yes um cutting it out and because you actually have to you think about a word and you you're looking for the word you know what i mean or you think about a picture you're looking for the picture so it helps you to i feel like it really helps you to connect yes and when you wake up every day and 
there's something right in front of you, your life, your vision, your dream. Every morning when you wake up, it's right there. Every night before you go to bed, it's right there. And what you don't realize is you're putting those positive vibes out into the universe and there's somebody hearing you. There's something picking that up. So every little thing that you do when you're when it's in your subconscious, what starts to happen is without you even realizing it, you're acting towards it. You're doing little things every single day to get towards that thing that you see on your vision board every single morning when you wake up and every single night before you go to bed. So the biggest question, and I know you know this, that everybody wants to know is how did it happen for you? You know, that's so many people's dream of wanting to do something with Oprah Winfrey. And you go from this little girl at a young age, putting in an extension in your mom's hair, getting excited about doing hair, opening up your own salon, having Oprah Winfrey on your vision board. And then one day something happens and now you are the personal stylist for, in my opinion, and many other people's opinion, the most significant woman in history for African-American women and women around the world in general. How does that happen? It, it's like, I was like, whoa. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, I mean, yeah. Um, so after you pick yourself up off the floor, then what happened? <laughs> you know, I have to go back because one of the things I feel like it, it was years of of excellence, years of me doing, you know, regular people, executives. I, I you know, I've, I've worked with other musicians and actors and actresses. Um, it was years of consistently being excellent at something. Mm -hmm. And um, that um, drew me to having a good reputation where somebody referred me um, to um, Andre Walker. And yeah. Andre Walker at the time was um, looking for um, an, a replacement for him because he was retiring. We met really liked him such a, a, a graceful and uh humble man and i actually did his hair that day did a haircut and we, we we chatted and he's just like you know what i think you may be a really good fit um but obviously you know it's up to her and it's up to you know your connection you know so i'll i'll make the the introduction and see what happens so uh, from that um, we met, I did her hair several times and, and that's how that opportunity unfolded basically. And six months later, basically I was working for her basically full time. So, <laughs> so, so here's the question, because I know many young entrepreneurs and just people in general that may be wanting a traditional job. When you were preparing to interview with the queen herself is what we call her, Oprah, you're preparing for this interview. How did you prepare for that? Um, I felt like it was more mental preparation at first because I knew that I had the skill set. Um, I've been a hairdresser for 25 years um, and I knew that I had the skill set to do it. Um, it was more of a mental, um, because going in that door, that fear kicks in, like, am I good enough? Mm. You know, because, you know, there's so many other people in the world that seemingly, you know, you know, they have these big careers and you think, well, here I am, you know, I've been, you know, doing hair excellent for many, many years, but, you know, I've been in this, this space. Um, Nobody really knows who I am um, other than, you know, I'm a, I'm a Chicago celebrity hairstylist, <laughs> but you know, globally, you know, no one really knew who I was in that space. And um, that was those conversations that were coming in, talking to me, you know, like, well, who do you think you are? And, you know, why would, you know, but then, you know, I said, why not me? Right. You know, and I think that's a question that you know many of us has to ask when those fears kick in about something you have a big dream and you may see other people doing it maybe even other people who are less talented than you but you know what i believe that they said to themselves why not me i can do it and they you know and when you believe in yourself you 
you enroll others to believe in you. And so that's that's the mindset I took in. And um, I ain't gonna say my hands weren't shaking when I was curling. <laughs> <laughs> I can imagine. <laughs> that I, you know, I wasn't slapping my hand like, stop it. Right, right. Oh. But, you know, I did my best anyway. And, you know, I had to trust that, you know, you know, I'm a very spiritual person, um, not religious, but I, you know, I believe in God and I believe that there are, you know, energies that are helping me to be successful in this, 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 this earthly plane. And, you know, I felt like it, it felt serendipitous. It felt like, you know, such an unexpected blessing. It felt like I was supposed to be there. Mm. It felt the timing, everything just felt so um, synergistically like I was supposed to be there. Um, that, you know what, I I went in there, did my best, gave it up to the to the Lord, to the Lord. <laughs> <laughs> and let the cards fall where they may, and they did. You know, and I you know, I feel a great sense of of gratitude, you know, that I'm in this space and I can do the work that I love to do and I get to do it on the queen. Yes, <laughs> yes you do. That is amazing. Okay, so let's talk about I know we all know that you are the personal stylist for Oprah Winfrey, but I also know that you've styled a lot of other celebrities. Like who else have you styled and how fun is that to be the one traveling the world and styling some of the most amazing celebrities in the world? Um, let's see. Who have I styled? I've styled um, Michelle Obama. Um Kelly Rowland, Michelle Williams, um, Macy Gray, Fantasia, Sanaa Lathan, um, Valerie Jarrett, who, you know, one of the um, women who I, I respect in terms of what she's done for our country and um, many, many other people. <laughs> wow, wow, yeah. that, that is so exciting. Well, see, that's great because I have a couple of questions for you from, we have a huge following of young entrepreneurs. I mean, and these little girls are like, I can't wait for you to meet some of them. They're just dy dynamic. But one of the young ladies is, her name is Bailey Officer. She's out of Alabama and she's 11 years old and she wants her hair to be curly, not poofy. And she wants to know what can she do to make her hair more of a curly texture, but where it doesn't, by the end of the day, it's not just poofy. If your hair is frizzy, it, it normally diffuses light. So you're going to want to add um, products that have oils, um, hold, um, but a light hold if she has straighter texture. Um, if she has like a kinkier texture hair, she's going to want to use a product that um, may be a little bit heavier. But, um, and, and typically when I'm as a hairstylist, I'm testing out products, I always feel the products. I want to know how it feels in my hands. Is it tacky? Is it, does it have a lot of oil in it? You can feel it. So um, with a, a, a client who, who has um, more textured hair, I would use a heavier product. And then from there on wet hair, I would probably either do some type of double strand twist if she has natural hair or a braid out or um, if they have relaxed texture and they might want more um, texture, they can do like a rod set or um, something of that nature to create more texture. Like I, I, I saw one of the videos, she was so cute. Uh, one of the, the girls, she had all these products laid out. Um, maybe you might be using too many products. Um, maybe you might want to start to see, use one product and see what that does on your hair. Maybe. You, and just write down what you like or dislike about how that product reacts on your hair. Maybe you trash it, or maybe you might say, hey, you know what? I like the way that product holds, but maybe I need a little more shine. Let me see if I might use a little bit of this, this um, serum that has some shine. Maybe I'll add like a little drop of that to it, and maybe that'll help with the frizz. So it's like different things like that to... Um, 
cater to your texture that you can do. Okay, perfect. So we're wrapping up. Um, the other question from uh, one of our young followers, she actually is 14 years old and she has a book called Curly Girls, Love Your Curls. She's an author already. She's also an entrepreneur who has her own product line actually called Curlinista. She already has her own hair care line. For her okay. Okay. I know, right? That's what I said. You okay. know. Her question to you is, what pushes you and gives you motivation? Hmm, that's a really good question. Um, I just have this a desire um, and a passion to um, really enhance um, the beauty and confidence in women, and that is one thing that that pushes me. The other thing is. Um, Certain things inspire me. I love to be in nature. I recently moved into uh, out to California and I love to uh, take long walks in nature because um, there's so much uh, inspiration being around trees and different things like that. My family inspires me to do more because, you know, um, you want to, at least for me and, um, you want to do, I want to do better um, than the last generation. I want to be able to uh, leave a legacy and whatever that looks like, it doesn't have to be like some big thing. Um, it could just be like the small things that you do um, to make a difference in someone's life um, that inspires you to, to do more, to help women, to help you know, children to speak to uh, young girls like yourself. Um, and, um, I honestly is one of the things I, I, I just really love what I do and that inspires me. Wow. That's fantastic. She's going to love to hear that. That's, that's great advice. Great advice. And also these young girls are so excited and they're so excited about what's next for you. You already have a huge following. Everybody's just waiting, like, what is she going to do next? And I would just love for you to share, um, number one, how can everyone stay in touch with you? How can they stay connected with you? How can they follow you? And what's next? Okay, um, you can follow me. I would say the best place to follow me right now is on Instagram and just go to Nicole Mangrum Hair and click that follow button and leave me, send me a DM. Say that you saw me on, on this talk with Pasha. I'd love to hear from you. And if you have any other questions, um, I'd love to answer them. Um, right now, I have some things in the works that I'm not quite ready to share yet, but um, if you follow me, I will definitely keep everyone um, on point and on notice of what I'm doing. I'll definitely let you know. Fantastic. And Asha is 15 years old and she wants to wear her hair natural. She really wants to wear her hair natural, but she says that she's lost her curl pattern from smoothing treatments and flat ironing and her edges are thin and her hair is thin. And she wants to know what does she need to do to get her hair back to where she can wear her natural curl pattern. Okay, I remember, what's her name, Pasha? Asha, her okay. name is Asha, okay. yes. I, I remember Asha's video. And so let's start with her hair because there was a lot of questions there. <laughs> her hair being thin or fine, I'm not sure if she, I, I'm, I feel like she was relaxed. So first of all, if she has fine hair, she may just have fine hair. And sometimes you, you have to manage what you have. Um, from there, if she is relaxing her hair, it could be a possibility that if she's relaxing it or with whomever is relaxing her hair, they could be over-processing her hair. Um, not quite sure, but that those, these are questions that I, I would ask if, if I was doing a consultation with her. Um, I would give her hair a trim, some definite treatments on your hair because it looks like maybe there might be some drying to the hair. So I would make sure that the hair is hydrated. 
um, get you a good hydrating conditioner and I would condition that hair, a deep conditioner at least once a week. That's fantastic. That's good to know. So last but not least, um, Oprah has her favorite things. We know that. But what are some of yours? Ooh, I have some. I have a few. Um, I have a, a shoe fetish, which. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I love that already. Tell us more. Shoes are one of my favorite things. Um, I'm also a foodie, so I love good food, whether um, I cook it myself, which I love to cook. I love gourmet cooking. So I have quite a few cookbooks and a lot of good things up my sleeve in the kitchen. I love it. And um, travel is another one of my favorite things. It's also, um, you mentioned to me, asked me uh, earlier about uh, things that inspire me. Well, travel inspires me because I love to experience different cultures and it's, it's wonderful when you can take inspiration from different places that are so uh, different from your own lifestyle, but you see the beauty in it and you can use it uh, within your everyday life or within your regimen of, of life. So those are some of my favorite things. So if you were to tell these little girls, young entrepreneurs that are watching you right now, if they were to pick one place in their lifetime, that you say you have to, you have to put it on your vision board oh, wow. and you have to go to this place, what would that place be? You know what? I would say you have to go to Africa and you have to do a safari because um, being on a safari makes you feel so small and it makes you appreciate our earth, it makes you appreciate and see the God in everything. Um, that was a, an actual awe experience for me. Wow, wow, so you've opened up my mind because there's one place that is on my vision board. I have not been to Africa yet. And I have been so many different places and I keep saying I've been waiting for my kids to get of age because that's, I always said to myself, when I go to Africa, I want, the kids to be old enough to appreciate it because I've done things in the past where you take them to Disney and they're two and they don't remember that they went and you're like, what do you mean you don't remember? Look at these pictures. You know how much money I paid for this trip? No. No. <laughs> so, so when we go to Africa, I'm like, you have to remember this trip, baby. You, you gotta, you gotta go to Africa and do a safari and then, you know, travel around. I, I, this particular trip, I was in South Africa. And so I did um, some uh, a private gaming reserve um, right outside of, uh, well, not right outside, but close to Joburg. And then after that, I went down to Cape Town and experienced Cape Town, which was beautiful. Mm -hmm. um, and the wine country in uh, Stellenbosch was uh, absolutely gorgeous. Y'all too young to drink. <laughs> but any mamas that's there are, are, are here, you might yeah. want to <laughs> yes, yes. go to Stellenbosch in, uh, in Joburg. Wow, that's fantastic. We're right, in Cape, right outside of Cape Town. I love it. All right, everybody. So this is the lightning round where I just ask Nicole a quick question and she's going to give us a quick response answer. And these are some of the questions that many of you have been asking. So the first one is, did you ever want to give up? All the time. Uh, yeah, definitely. I wanted to give up, but I had to pick myself up. I love that. The next question is, what is your advice for a young aspiring entrepreneur? Go into uh, an area that you're passionate about. There's a young, young lady who left a video on our page. Her name is Amber Humphreys, and she's an actress as well as an entrepreneur. Now, Amber's question is, what protective style helps your hair grow? Oh, I think I remember her. She was so cute. She had the little dance um amber um braid braids i might feel might be the best for you and um and if you're gonna do braids um make sure they're not too tight and also make sure that um if you're doing any swimming you're swimming in any pools that you use a clarifying shampoo right after and rinse your hair really really well 
and use a, a clarifying shampoo and conditioner on your hair right after you swim in any kind of salt salt water. Like if you're swimming in the ocean or if you're swimming um, in a pool. But um, a protective style like braids, I feel like would be a good style for um, a young girl in the summertime. I love it. Well, you have been such an amazing guest and I just want to thank you. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you for sharing. There are going to be some entrepreneurs that are going to be created from this interview. I know it. There are going to be some people who put their vision board up. There are going to be so many young girls that start taking care of their hair simply because you shared this message. So we want to thank you for, well, from the VIP show to you. Thank you so much, Nicole, for everything. Thank you for having and me. You know I love you. I love you too, babe. All right. You too. All right. See you soon. Bye-bye, babe.